to the Kalamazoo Air right. Zoo. I have not been here in quite some time. Up here checking out my Ford 4AT tri-motor and uh, I thought I'd check this out. I don't think I've been here in years. I'm go this way and park over there. T33, all sorts of jets. Anyway, check it out. As you can see, there's a pretty good crowd of a parking lot going, and uh, a lot of families coming in, which is pretty good. I never saw this amount of people when I was open. This is obviously the way I'm supposed to be going. Check it. Oh my god, that is Sue's pink P40. She passed away a number of years ago. Anyway. Okay, I got my ticket and I was very, very surprised. The guy who I walked up to buy a uh, ticket from said, uh, Oh, hi, Kermit. How you doing? I thought, what, what, what? and he said, anyway, so he checked me in, it's like 15 bucks to get in, and uh, the guy was just nicer than hell, and we sat there and we talked and blah, 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 and, uh, and I said, what do you owe? He says, oh, nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing? He says, no, 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 my such and such uh, said you were coming and to let me in. I thought, well, how'd you know I was coming? I didn't tell anybody, <laughs> so I'm like, anyway, so, uh, you know, the last couple of years of Fantasy of Flight, it didn't make any difference whether I spent a whole bunch on advertising or nothing on advertising. The last eight years I was open, one time I cracked 40,000 people a year, okay? These guys are doing two to 300,000 people a year, and I'm in a place where there's 65 million people a year looking for something new to do. Anyway, so they've got museum-y stuff, and the guy says, that's why all the people come, okay? Because they do rides. I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, so we're just gonna do a quick tour here. Stop with the cut. I got two of those. Oh, that's a camel. Sorry about that. That looks, I don't know if that's a flyer. Looks like it could be. Uh, 110 will run. Ford Tri-Motor. They, they used to hop rides in this, but for some reason, uh, and they did something with the EAA and uh, leased it out, and basically, uh, you know, now they got it in the museum. Um, Curtis Robin, I've got one that's just that nice. Got an OX-5 in it. It was very, very marginal with an OX-5 in it. Okay, so apparently, that's why all the kids come. Okay. For 15 bucks, you can come and ride. Oh, well, that's a pretty cool uh, simulator, flight simulator with Amelia there. I like their floor. The floor is kind of nice. Uh, the fair child and a whatever. Anyway, so apparently they're not flying this anymore. And he said, oh, he said, oh, you know, where do they get their money is their ride operation. I said, oh, you're still flying uh, rides out at the airport. And he says, no. And he said, that's their ride operation. I'm sorry. 
I'm not going to get into that. Um, hope it doesn't start. <laughs> Cute little racer. Blue KB Bullet. Traveler Mystery Ship. i got to build one of those one day. Um, David Arnold has the actual original uh, Poncho Barnes Mystery Ship. He bought it and he paid a pretty good amount for it. It needed to be restored. And then he restored it and, you know, they never flew it, but at some point, if he does sell it, he will be asking probably stupid money. Waco. We'll see how many kids are looking at airplanes when we walk around. Okay, so they're loading up a new batch for that. That's a triplane. Golf game balloon. Small replica Jenny. Okay. Man, this is just an amusement park down at this end. Pretty cute. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have things like this, but they have to tell a story in a way that people self reflect. Okay, I'm not in the entertainment business. I'm in the business of using entertainment to get people to self-discover themselves. So what you do is you take something like that and you go, how can we apply that to the human experience? Um, it's pretty cool that the kids are having fun though. I mean, that, that's awesome. But if you can do it in a way that's memorable, uh, then it's even better. Yeah, it was interesting when uh, I, I had spoken at the Smithsonian Institute and I kind of told everybody what I was going to be doing. And the guy that was running this place at the time, Bob Ellis, you know, he, they, he misinterpreted what I was going to do and he came up with this whole concept. And uh, basically, uh, you know, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this, you know, like what Kermit's going to do. Well, this was never what I intended to do. So, the balloon ride. For 15 bucks, this is pretty good for the kids, you know? I mean, you can't go to Disney and, you know, do other amusement park type places and do that. And, you know, once these rides are in here, man, it's all air conditioned and, uh, you know, I mean, you see why the kids enjoy it. But I question how much they learn about aviation. So here we go. She's probably going to go in over there to punch the button and get this whole thing going. I have a fabulous concept of using the balloons to teach kids about something that's going to be very engaging. And so it goes up. Their child. I think it's a Howard, I think. Yeah, nobody looking at this stuff. Nobody reading this stuff. See, and you go to the airplane side and there's nobody over here. 25, oh man, it's an Air Apache, which is the uh, same paint job as mine. Is an Air Apache. See what they got on the nose here. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Back side of a Curtis Robin. Of course, Ford is a local thing around here. Stop with Camel. A Stad. I don't know if that's a 13 or a 7. And I don't know if that was ever a flyer. Spad 7. Yeah, I've got a Spad 7, but most of it's been completely rebuilt. Put a 180 Hisso in it. And they're doing some kind of a, uh, I don't know, 
some kind of a thing here where everybody's checking out something. There's some volunteers checking in when I checked in. Yeah, oh, look at how many people are overlooking at the airplanes. Look at an SR-71. Uh, some kind of, I don't know what these Vietnam jets are. Anyway, the emptiness says it all. And over here, there's a big line. Ah, but there's a ride. One of the first ones I ever went to was uh, was up here. Okay, lots more educational stuff. What he's looking at? Got some flight simulators. Looks like a little Kit Fox or an avid Kit Fox, I think. People spinning around. Oh, they got an aircraft carrier too, just like my fighter town used to. <laughs> anyway, A4. Oh my god, where did they get this? That is pretty cool. I can't remember what that one was. Oh man, that's sad. Somebody didn't look where they were going. A Wright XP-55, that's probably the only one. That's pretty awesome. Um, Bouchon. Yeah, that's a wild purple paint job. P-39, that P-39 came from Ed Messick, I believe, a long time ago. I've got a project that uh, guys in Australia went down and made a lot of new bulkheads and everything so mine is very very incomplete uh, not incomplete as incomplete as far as uh, being put together pretty nice looking B25 B40 e. Bouchon Oh, top turret. That's pretty cool. See, I'm going to have things to where one of the things I want to do in Fantasy of Flight is I'm going to have a, a B-17 experience where people come in that don't know each other, like what the kids did. You know, they came in and they had to accomplish a mission and goal uh, and survive with people they didn't know. And so I'm going to have a B-17 laid out, and people are going to go on missions together. And it's, a, it's basically a theme to where it's kind of like on planet Earth, okay? And if you uh, basically, you know, have you ever been thrown together with a bunch of people and had to accomplish a mission and goal? Well, of course, it's a metaphor for, for life, basically, on planet Earth. The... the, the Paintings and stuff around here are awesome. I mean, those displays and everything's nice, you know. They got the low ropes, you know, so you don't feel like you're, you know, don't touch kind of deal. P-47. That's a nice looking one. Buzz bomb. B-1. I don't know if they're actually running this exhibit or not. Headphone zone. Anyway, I have seen the museum. There are the kids having fun. I have concepts to use attraction element equipment like this, but not just for fun.
Oh well. Let's see. What we've got here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Kind of Waco. Oh, a YP. YPF7. All the Wacos are some kind of deal. Anyway. I always talked about the uh, Waco and a Waco from Waco. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Okay, I mean, it's nice. Oh my God. They're, well, you know, the bottom line is they're doing a hell of a lot more people than I ever did. I'd still be in business if I was doing that number of people a year. So kudos to them. They have figured it out better than I did. Here's the gift shop. Pretty cool. Of course, everybody's in there playing right now, so. God, oh, they're Sue Parrish. God, she was a classic. Uh, she was a staple in my early days at uh, the, uh, what do you call it, Oshkosh, so. Pretty cool. Anyway, we need some more people in the gift shop. We see where everybody is. So, anyway, if I don't uh, accomplish what I hope to accomplish, then I lost all my faith in humanity. Now, I'm going to head over to the airport side, which was the original, uh, what do you call it, museum location. And then this was built specifically for this, okay? Um, but they do the restorations, you know, over at the airport, and it's only, I think it's about a mile away. So, anyway, um, fascinating. I am proud of them for their success. Uh, the guy that checked me in said that they, uh, they use some volunteers, but they, they also have paid people, so. And apparently the people that operate the rods <laughs> have to be paid. So, but I think it's a 501c3 uh, operation at some point. So, anyway, kudos to them. Let's go check out the uh, museum. Uh, well, that's where we're headed. Quick little trip. I don't know what their, you know, what their their budget is and what they make, and I mean, I assume their cash flow positive. Uh, he he said, you know, before the pandemic they were doing a lot better, but uh, you know they're they're kind of down on their uh, attendance pre-pandemic attendance. So anyway, so not very far to go, and uh, Waldo. Uh, right you know Rob uh, and Jill uh, used to come up in the summertime and run a standard uh, new standard ride operation out here this is where they do the the uh, restorations and stuff and I'll park right here um, and Rob and Jill used to run a ride operation out of here so I'll just go up here got some space So we shall see what they're doing here. This is where all of this started. And this is where I used to remember coming um, in my early days. Got an F4 sitting out there and it looks like a MiG-21. Um, lots of old jets. We got a P80 here. Oh, I think they just said they were stored. Is this a 117 or something like that? Canberra. I'm a vintage guy. I'm not into all these. Now that would be cool, but uh I pretty much end my collection with uh, 
prop airplanes at the end of World War II um, and uh, you know some early airliners helicopters from Korea and uh, what else um, helicopters that's the Kalamazoo Airport so we got a Huey Cobra out there some people in there. I don't know if it's a gift shop or whatever. Okay, so here's the entrance. My armband, free armband, got me into here for free as well. Pete Parrish, he was flew the Corsair quite a lot. It's a 2800. Allison for the P40. Oh my god, I could put tons of propellers up. Oh my, those are really cool. Little small. Look like they run too. All sorts of engines. Uh, most of them have displays. Yeah, P47. I've not flown one of those yet. Look forward to getting one of mine. Or mine going at some point. Oh, they got a, they got, they're giving Huey Cobra rides out there. And, uh, anyway, they're getting ready to do that. Merlin, out of a Mustang, cockpits, for people to sit in. Oh my God, that's a 4360 QEC off of something gigantic. It's kind of neat, you can walk around it. That is out of a, it doesn't say, but there was eight of those on a, on the Spruce Goose, the HK1, and uh, how would you like to be a kid and say, hey, go change the spark plugs, <laughs> eight times 56. So what they've done here, in the past, they've, uh, oh, there we go, a Caddy Wagstaff flight suit. Flew with Caddy on the U.S. Aerobatic team a few times. I should donate some of the Kermit Weeks underwear collection. What's happening? Good morning. Good, good, good. What are y'all farting with? Wildcat. <laughs> this is our Wildcat project that's going down to the uh, Medal of Honor Museum. Good. Awesome. Is that a lake airplane? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good, good, good. Looks pretty good. Well, thank you. Pretty cool. We can, um, we can use some help finishing it. We've got yeah. A year to finish it. Oh my God. Good for you. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. Good. That's a great idea. That's a great the, idea. Uh, one of our volunteers designed that and actually he helped build it. Huh. He's a veterinarian. Yeah, cool. <laughs> They're pretty smart guys. Awesome. So we're going to bring the, the Huey in here too. Oh, good. What, has it been hot rides already or are they just getting ready? They're just getting ready. He yeah. only arrived about 30 minutes ago. Good for you guys. That's awesome. F-11, I don't know anything about these jets. I know that's a 104. Can you believe that damn thing flies with that amount of wing? We're talking speed is of the essence. Kids playing in a helicopter, some little light airplanes. Oh my God, look at this thing, an F-111. No. F-117 shows you how much I know about modern airplanes. I actually, I can't see it. It's so stealthy. Got 104. God, look at the look at nice job restoring it though for display. 
This is like 20 millimeter. I think, whatever. Cougar. Some kind of plastic airplane. Looks like the back end of a V2 rocket. That's pretty cool. Oh no. Oh yeah, I think that's what that is. Of course, I could be wrong. Some kind of whatever. I'm not into rockets. Oh, guess what we have here? I need to. I need to take a picture, and I'm gonna send it to Rob. So, excuse me while I take a selfie. So we got but Troy yeah. here, and Troy, so do you run this operation or do you run the other operation? So I am the president and CEO of the Air Zoo, so it is the okay. entire operation. Okay. So all and Troy here is the one that gave me my free ticket, which I didn't <laughs> know how he found, but he found out through somebody, Maurice called somebody, and I appreciate 4.20 that. in the morning, our team, you know, they never sleep, so that's when I found out. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. So... So do you normally work over there in an office or do you, so you just came over here to see me? I do. Well, actually today we have a Huey that right, just landed right, here and it's right. going to be giving people rides all day. So, so I've been sort of flitting back and forth. I normally work in what we call our right. flight innovation uh -huh. center in the okay. other building, but today a lot going on here in our awesome. restoration area well, too. Well, that's great. Well, it's mm -hmm. been a while since I've been here, you know, and I mean, God almighty, Pete and Sue were oh, uh, yeah. a staple part of the Oshkosh mm -hmm. Christ come mm -hmm. over in the early days and mm -hmm. Bob Ellis and, uh, Oh my God, it just and brings his, back his, so his many memories. John, yeah, yeah, that is the one thing, you know, we, we used to have those air shows here and I regret that for me, I've been here for nine years, uh -huh. so I never got to see one. So oh that's, my uh, God. But, but it's fun well, going all over the country. I to just took a selfie and sent it to Rob and yeah. Jill. And I didn't, <laughs> I knew they were keeping the plane somewhere, but I thought mm -hmm. he was like paying for a hangar. Mm -hmm. So this works out pretty cool for him. And he's, he, yeah. he doesn't even do the ride thing out of my place anymore. He's just mm -hmm. working on Stearman's and yeah. I think he's kind of just, trying something a little bit new for a while right so well and we, cool. we've had a couple of great summers with them yeah. here uh -huh. and uh, giving yeah. rides and you know unfortunately with covid the last few summers yeah. uh yeah. it's been sitting here but we're looking yeah. forward to maybe next yeah. year getting it going awesome. again good, here good, in good. Well, thank you so much man i'll just keep poking around what the hell is this please is that do. a c46 no what, the the, in the corner no this big oh this is this is a star uh, wars <laughs> looking thing <laughs> this is actually a bread rocket that was created uh, in the, it was like the early 50s by the Silver Cup Bread Company. And that was a time where the, the whole idea of science fiction space Ro travel oh, see. was okay. becoming science fact. So they built this giant thing and they toured it around okay. Michigan. But it to, wasn't intended to fly. Oh, never intended to fly. Oh, okay. You can see it's on wheels over there. So, so kids could actually climb up inside oh, of it and learn cool. all about like oh, the cool future of space flight. So. We are hoping to one day restore this. Uh, right now, it is definitely a conversation piece. Obviously, yeah, it catches yeah, your yeah. eye really quickly, yeah. but it, it was iconic here in Michigan back in the 50s. Oh my, oh yeah, it's got the wheels on the back there. That is too cool, oh my God. That is so cool. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so well, much for you. Yeah, enjoy yeah, your yeah, travels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Travis. Are you going over to Oshkosh? I, I, well, yes, I am. I'm going to be um, not quite sure which day yet. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I would. I will, we'll, well, I'll be get over signing there. books in the EA warehouse. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Come by and I'll okay. sign one for you. Okay. Yeah, I would good, love good, that. Good. Thank Super. you. Thank you, Troy. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I wish I had. Uh, video uh, Travis was the one that let me in the, uh, the museum over there so that's pretty cool it's like a mallard oh I'm going, that's not an Indian motorcycle yeah mallard what a nice nice airplane it's unfortunate when they had the chalks accident and the wing broke off killing everybody in the airplane uh, they had a spar mod that you have to do. They grounded all the airplanes, and it's a million bucks to fix the spar. Anyway, so, MiG-15, I got one of those. You can't see that airplane. That's a stealth airplane. F-86 Sabre. 
you know, most of y'all don't know out there, but I've got, I brought 10 CAC Sabres back uh, from Indonesia that were given from the Australian government to the uh, Indonesians. Oh my God. They had the Avon engine and it was the biggest engine they ever built for, uh, uh, it was the original Sa uh, Sabre engine, F-86, had 5,700 pounds of thrust and then they incrementally got more up through the Canadair airplanes and the, uh, the Avon was 7,500 pounds of thrust and they actually had it set up, you could put two drop tanks on each side. Anyway, I don't think I'm ever going to get the one. That looks like the Wildcat folding sections for the fuselage that we saw over there. Um, well, they got a paint booth inside. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Moving that almost looks like, like a carny ride, doesn't it? Oh, see, this is where they do the restoration the shop. It's like a, a oh, that's probably for the Wildcat. 1820. Yeah, there you go. There's the wings for the Wildcat. Kids playing in the deal. A bunch of little small airplanes. Anyway, it's awesome. You know, everybody's doing the best they can with what they got. And I'm trying to do the best I can with what I got. So we'll just see where it goes. Back here with uh, Troy again, and so like the uh, Travis was uh, was let me in over there, yeah. And he was saying y'all do like uh, are used to do between two and three hundred thousand people a year. We yeah, we do about two hundred thousand people a year oh, here, awesome. and that was 2019, our best year ever. Right. And, and I'm I'm thrilled to say that this summer we are are back, and in fact awesome. even uh, even even a little bit farther ahead. Oh my so god, we're, that's awesome! We're really happy that you well, everybody know, that... missed it. Mm -hmm. And so, how much do you guys? How much do you depend on donations, and how much do you completely make in revenue? The the donations are really important. I mean, yeah. I think we're we're up over like probably close to two and a half million in terms of earned revenue, like the admissions, right. events, membership, all of that. But yeah, then from there, it's really all about really? Uh, foundations huh. and individual giving, corporate giving. I mean, right. you know, we want so how much our do they pick up the slap? Invested. Um, it, it's uh, well over a million dollars, yeah, and, okay. and, oh and, and and you know, yeah. it's it's never enough for an enterprise like this, right? Because there's yeah. always like that next cool thing that you right. want to bring in for the community. So, right. but yeah, that's that community awesome. support is everything there you go. well if you ever get down to florida please come by and let me give you a grand tour of what i want will to do, do. Okay? i good can't deal. wait all right oh my god thank Seymour. you thank you, thank you right. Troy. i appreciate it good deal oh, looks oh. good guys thank you there we go and they're working on an svd pretty cool like an 1820 over there it probably goes on it Oh my God, thank God I have no interest in this stuff. I don't know what that is. It's a rocket. Oh. Huh, how about that? You can make a nice steam room. <laughs> anyway. It's great that people are, you know, trying to save, save this kind of stuff, but it's a tough deal, you know? I'm talking to Troy there, and uh, that's a wood shop. It's, they, you got airplanes people want to give them because they're shutting places down, and uh, they, you know, it's, they, they're limited, I'm limited. I'm cramped for space. Like the SPD wings, my, my wings are being, Redone. Oh no, I'm cool. Thanks. Okay. Down in uh, Chino, and uh, but mine's gonna be a flyer. It, not sure if that one's gonna fly or not. I think these guys are limiting themselves on how many airplanes that they fly, and they, you know, basically, uh, you know, go to air shows and stuff. You know, when Sue and Pete were around, that was kind of the focus, you know, but of course they were the money behind everything. Anyway, so, 
cool. I'll tell you what though, about of all this, I've met a ton of great people. Uh, everybody's passionate about what they do. There we go. There's the Huey. They're doing their passion, keeping things alive. Anyway, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Got a chance to fly one. And they did a Vietnam Wall thing uh, years ago. Okay, over and out.